when you're building your network, whether it's a wide area network or a local area network, the physical media that you're using becomes very important. If you don't have a good physical infrastructure, then you're going to have problems with the entire network. When you're working with different types of media, you're concerned about the media itself. You're concerned about the speed and the distance that you may be going with this. And all these things work together. Different types of media are going to give you different types of speed and different types of distance. And if you need higher speeds or you need longer distances, you may be using different types of media to have that work. The three types that we're going to look at are coax, twisted pair, and fiber. And usually you're picking one of those three when you're building a circuit and you're sending data across that connection. Coax connections are effectively copper wires that are put inside of these very heavy and very thick cables. It's a type of cable that has been around, or at least patented, since the 1880s. You can carry signals over very long distances with coax. Really, you don't see it being used for long distances these days. We use fiber instead. But coax has traditionally been used to extend signals over a very large geographical area. One disadvantage you have with coax, however, is that you can have signal leakage that comes out of that coax signal, and even ground loops, because you're connecting two very diverse connections with a single cable and that copper between them. There's also a number of other copper-related interference problems and leakage problems you have to think about when you're extending that big network connection over such a long area over coax cable. In our local area connections, we usually use something like twisted pair cabling, like these copper cables, where there are many, many different copper wires inside of this cable. And they're all twisted together into these pairs. That effectively creates a way to have cancellation of any interference that might hit this wiring as it's going from one side to the other. And it's that twist inside of it that handles that cancellation. Even early telegraph lines had twists inside of their cables. And of course, the telegraph lines were really two wires that went across very long distances of lines. And they very often were sharing power on those same poles. So what they would do is every few poles, they would separate and twist the wires onto those poles so they would cross over and go another few poles and then cross over again. And because they were canceling out every few poles, six twists per mile, they were able to get rid of some of the interference that was caused by having the power on the same pole. So it's the same idea, just miniaturized into these twisted pair cabling that we use today. Twisted pair cabling is very thin. It's very flexible. We can put it in a lot of different places. It's not very expensive to implement. There are very tight specifications, though, to be able to use these twisted pair cables. You can't really pull on them very hard. You can't really take them around corners. There's a specific bend radius associated with them. So you have to make sure you have a professional that understands during the implementation exactly the types of limitations that you might have on these very, very fragile copper wires in your twisted pair cabling. Optical fiber is another technology that's been around for a very long time, since the 1840s. People were sending signals through glass, through diamonds, and through water. Not quite the same type of optic cables that we use today, but still the type of methodology still applies. You're refracting light through glass and through diamonds and through water to be able to make that happen. These days, we're using optical fiber for very, very, very long communication. We're going kilometers at a time as we're sending this traffic. And we're all doing it at very high speeds of data going through those connections. As the light goes through this fiber, it obviously doesn't have to worry so much about interference. There's no signal leakage you have to worry about getting out and interfering with anything else outside. There's really no electrical magnetic interference concerns at all. You just have to worry that the light is going to be bright enough when it gets to the other end of the fiber. And that means you have to make sure it's terminated properly. There's some very specific methods and specific ways to handle these fiber type connections. You can't bend the fiber to a very high radius, or you're going to lose a lot of light because it has a problem going around those corners. But as long as you properly install these fiber connections, you'll be able to go a very, very long distance simply using light over these optical fibers.